everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another amazing episode of VO Buzz Weekly. That's right, and right now we're going to continue our talk with Sam Regal. As a director, what are some things that, the, when you're in session, what are some things that talent do, the talent do that you actually love that make the process go smoother? And what are some things maybe that the talent do that you dislike? Hmm. Interesting. Can I name names? No, I'm not going to. No, no, <laughs> I was just going to say, you don't have to name names, but, you know, we'll just bleep it. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, well, you know, uh, reading the script ahead of time for, for animation jobs, mm -hmm. for any jobs, uh, reading the script ahead of time and, and sort of knowing where the story's going always helps because, um, you know, if there's a line, like a key line early in the script that's like going to end up being the lesson of the, mm. of the episode later. Yeah. You know, you'll say it differently if you know that that's a key moment, yeah. but you won't know if you haven't read the script ahead of right. time. Um, so preparation. preparation. Although sometimes it's hard. Like video games, you don't get the script yeah. ahead of time. Sometimes you're not allowed to know where the story is going because mm. you're signing all these NDAs mm -hmm. and, and they can't tell you. But... Um, so as much preparation as you can as you can do is great. If you're gonna <laughs> have so suggestions articulate. for like other lines or improv-y stuff, mm -hmm. we love improv -y stuff. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you give us at least one or two good ones as written. Okay. Because uh -huh. some actors um, uh, like will just run with it. Yeah. Like like, and they're funny. Like there's funny actors out there in in our field who. Um, can just riff on a yeah. joke and mm -hmm. really make it even funnier than the writer could have ever imagined. Yeah. But sometimes they get like addicted to that, and mm -hmm. that's like all they do, and they never mm -hmm. say the the words that are written on the yeah, script. Yeah. So the story's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but you know, most of the pros like they'll give it to you at least uh, one solid take as right. written mm -hmm. before they dance off into their own headspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so those are things I like. I, uh, things I don't like. I don't ah, know. Oh, boy. Open your ears now. Hmm. Hmm. I, you know, I love everybody. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love everybody. Look at that. There's not. There's, there's no get, wrong. There's got to be something that you sometimes may, maybe think. Texting uh, in the session. I wish they had. Oh yeah, of okay. course. <laughs> no one wants. Well, yeah. No one wants an actor who's texting uh, between takes. But you know, sometimes it's boring, and you get, like if someone else is talking, <laughs> yeah. you're just sitting there. Oh, I you understand. I mean, it. Sam may have texted. And I said, may have texted a few times. <gasps> I may okay. have texted. Yeah. I text a lot with uh, with my friend Liam O'Brien, yeah. who's also a voice actor and mm -hmm. who is the co-host of yeah. Yeah. my podcast, All Work, No Play. And we frequently text each other while we're working, um, which is terribly unprofessional, but it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I make no apologies for that. All right. Um, but yes, you sh probably shouldn't text uh, in, in a session or... Uh, or take phone calls mid take. That's happened oh, to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, mid take? Yeah, like, okay, we're rolling now, on you take don't even three. Do that. Huh? What? Hello? Huh? What? Oh, He's on the phone. Gosh. Okay, I guess we'll just wait. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Interesting. So basically, just from the cool factor, not cool. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. What about attitudes? Like, you know, having people come into sessions with like maybe bad attitudes or like, you know, they're bummed out or, I mean. Sure, I mean, like any. Like any field, people are going to have bad days or like they woke up on the wrong side of the bed that morning. And some of that's understandable if, yeah. as long as you acknowledge it and say, listen, guys, I'm having a rough day today or whatever, then we get it. But yeah, having a, a bad attitude about taking direction or like complaining about the line sometimes mm. because you don't know who's in there. Who, maybe the guy who wrote it is in yeah, there. True. And... So there's ways of doing it. Like if you don't like the line, presenting it as like, ah, it's, it's really uncomfortable for me to say these words. I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. My mouth can't say it right. Mm -hmm. You That's know, put it, putting putting, putting it on, it on you. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. we could we maybe tweak yeah. it rather than saying, Jesus, who wrote this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Sam, can you offer any specific tips to someone who is auditioning for animation? Say? Sure. Um, I think one of the basic things that um, that people uh, not get wrong, but don't do right <laughs> uh, early on is um, they will uh, they'll choose a voice and like a, an arrange for the the character that they're that they're gonna hit you with, mm. and then 
all five lines in the audition will be delivered at that same sort of cadence, pace, pitch, mm. volume. Like, mm -hmm. like every line is the same. I'm going to say this line like this. How are you doing, Mom? Get back to the battlefield. You know, they're all kind of the same. Right. So, um, and it's tricky because uh, audition sides for animation, there's little context. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's... It's different lines from, it's not a continuous different scene, scenes, it's right? from different yeah. scenes, or maybe mm -hmm. it is one continuous scene that breaks somewhere in the middle, but they don't inter, uh, indicate that somehow. Anyway, I would treat um, animation audition sides as like um, a menu of moods for this character. Like you want to show as many different aspects of this character as you can mm -hmm. within those five or seven lines that they give you in the audition sides. So this is my guy being heroic, and this is my guy being vulnerable. And this is what he would sound like if he were, you know, whispering. And this is what my guy would sound like if he's running from something or whatever it is. Right. Um, and just try to look for clues in the sides uh, because usually they're... The, mm -hmm. the lines that they give you in, in these sides are there for a reason, mm -hmm. to show these different sides and facets mm -hmm. of the character. So um, take a pause between every line, which you can edit out later if you're editing your own audition or if someone's editing it for you. Right. And like a really reset, like, okay, my new emotion is sadness. And then I do that next line and then stop, wait, refocus, and do the next mm -hmm. line in a totally different emotion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you'll be showing different sides of the character as yeah. opposed to just reading through yeah. in one blaze. And that seems especially for video games because so many times they want you to be in the war zone, they want you to be, you know, they're so, yeah. so it's very clear they want yeah. to see the range of the character. Yeah, and usually in video game auditions, they'll end the, the audition sides with, like, yelling stuff. Mm -hmm. Because, and for those, you really want to let her rip, because yeah. they want to see how loud you can go. Um, just full on screaming sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Do you like doing that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a paycheck. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I do. I, it's I a like fun four hours. Yeah, yeah. death sounds. And... Usually, I mean, sometimes they save all that to the end of the session, but yeah. every once in a while, that's the whole session is just yelling wow. and it's rough. So you try to schedule it on a Friday. Yeah. So you have the weekend to recover, yeah. and then there's like other people have um, little. T tricks or yeah. Fred mm -hmm. Tatashore, have you had him on? Uh, no, nope, not yet. You should have him on. He's amazing. Okay. But he uses this stuff called Nim Jam Pe Pa Kwa, which is um, this Chinese elixir of magic oh. and it coats your throat. Really? And it protects from all the yelling and stuff. Uh, have you used it? It's like it? Chinese oh, yeah. entertainer secret? Oh, yeah. It, yeah. it helps. Wow. Nothing can protect you totally, but it, right. it Where do you get it? You get it in Chinatown, I got a guy. He got a guy. Yeah, just go. To we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do a little digging and we're gonna what? let you guys know where you can get this uh, find leave, this guy. You leave money on top of a mailbox and he drops it. And he it, drops so. it off. Has yeah. anyone and, tested this and, for us? Yes, you want to take it on a Friday when you're not driving exactly. anywhere. Exactly. Do not operate machinery. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, congratulations on the success of Sophia the First. Oh my goodness. Thank you. It's renewed for a second season. Yeah, yeah. We're already um, halfway through recording the second season or midway through, yeah. I was reading this in The Hollywood Reporter. It says it's the number one show for kids ages two to five mm -hmm. and uh, for both boys and girls. And then it's also very popular in the demographic of women 18 to 49. Mm -hmm. So Explain they were saying it. that, <laughs> That's the uh, according to them, yeah. that it was, you know, obviously caregivers, parents are comfortable putting their kids in front of them, but a lot of them are engaged that they end up sitting, the adults sit and watch with them. Well, I mean, so I'm biased. Cool. I love the show. I think it's really great. It even, is. It's even though it's show. meant for like younger kids, we don't really treat it like that. We mm -hmm. treat it like a, just a show that we would want to watch. Mm -hmm. um, that also has a nice message and nice characters that kids can identify with. And yeah. hijinks. Yeah. yeah. But there's also characters and, and storylines peppered in there that um, that can appeal to adults. I think Jess Harnell's character, uh, Cedric, Cedric the Sorcerer. Great character. He's kind of there for yeah. that reason. Like, he's entertaining for adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the kids come and bother him all the time. And yeah. he rolls his eyes. And it's just fun to, to see that dynamic. Yeah. He has to listen to these, yeah. let these kids boss him around. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been so rewarding to work on. The cast is 
incredible. We get all these amazing guest performers mm -hmm. um, from from screen and TV and stage and like amazing, amazing uh, actors that I've gotten a chance to work with. Right. And and really watch work mm -hmm. um, and learn from. And it's been great. And I hope it runs for. 20 seasons. Me too. We do too. <laughs> yes. No, it's beautiful. And I mean, there's so much music in it and yeah. it's just visually lovely and, and, and it's just, it's got a wonderful, I mean, even when it's kind of being mischievous, it still doesn't cross that line of being yeah. really negative. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's like, it's a Disney show and I feel like it's a Disney show in the best possible yeah. way. Yeah. Like it's, it's, Magic, like it's ma yeah. it's a magical show. It makes you happy. It has that very classic Disney look yeah. about it, from yeah. like the original kind of Disney movies. And it's just a very exactly. It looks, looks like a, a Disney classic. movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, It's really cool. Well, congratulations, man. That's Thank really, you. Really, really cool. Thank you. It's um, been a pleasure. You should be very, very proud of yeah. that. Okay, so uh, anime versus animation. What's the difference? They are both animated, so okay. that's not a difference. That's not a difference. <laughs> Uh, anime comes from Japan. <laughs> I think that's really the only difference. I mean, anime has a lot of different styles to it, as does American animation. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess... Are the two styles significantly different, though? Or there's crossover, there's crossover. But, and there's influence. Mm -hmm. But I think Japanese animation, anime, has a distinct look, a distinct... Okay. It, has, it has tropes uh, mm -hmm. that are pretty pretty uh, drilled down into the Japanese psyche yeah. and um, you know there's a wide variety of, sure. of anime but uh, within within the anime realm you can like the drawing style is different the big eyes and stuff yeah, and the, exactly. the cool hair yeah um, the cool hair <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's robots and mech and uh, classic stories that mm. kind of get revisited over and over again um, and for an actor, the the difference, as uh, as you guys, I'm sure, have talked about on the show before, is that we're dubbing it into English. Like, it's already been recorded. Okay. Right. And so all we're doing now is uh, changing the Japanese into English. Mm. So um, that presents all sorts of challenges. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, it's it's sort of like... Uh, art and science, or like art and science, math yeah. and science. Yeah. So, from because from, you've done a lot of anime, um, from an actor perspective, your approach to the the characterization, um, because I mean, are you actually seeing it in the Japanese? I mean, how does that work as from an acting perspective? How you? Sure. Yeah. So when we record and, anime, we do. Um, we, they show us they show us the picture, which mm -hmm. is unlike doing like an original an animation series mm -hmm. here, because you do the audio first, the dialogue first, and then they draw to your voice. Right. But um, so they show us the the picture, they show us the scene that we're recording, and they play it for us once in Japanese, and then we go you know line by line, and you don't have to match the little character. You do mouth. have to match the character's mouth, and that's where it gets tricky. Um, <laughs> usually, they've written the script so that it more or less fits, yeah. but um, that's that's the trickiest part. It's like the technical aspect of of dubbing is making the acting still good and getting all the words in, but fitting it into the way the mouth is moving wow. without right. making it sound ridiculous. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, it's tricky and challenging, and there's there's like voice actors, and then there's a much smaller subset of voice actors who are really good at that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I found that it's a lot of like singers, people who are good singers or have music Rhythm, singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They are good at it because um, they. It's like it's meter. like following yeah. a meter yeah. and and uh, observing like half note rests and mm -hmm. full note rests and stuff like that. Um, and it just takes practice and practice and practice. But wow. once you get good at it, it's a great skill to have for other stuff for doing ADR for movies mm -hmm. or or cartoons. Um, and I feel like it makes you. Uh, any, any time in front of the mic makes you a better actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it certainly makes you a better technical actor. Like you learn to use the microphone and change your voice very quickly mm -hmm. and do pauses where you wouldn't normally do pauses and stuff. And yeah. It's fun. That's it, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. It yeah. sounds like fun. I know they look cool as heck, man. I they know, do. The characters um, are so fun. They Absolutely. do. They're just so cute. Um, question here for you. Yes. Um, you're a director. I am. 
Still, okay, you're among still, still <laughs> among many other things. So, but you still, I'm still a director. But you still audition for voiceover jobs. Yes. yes, and you might have touched this, but I just want to touch on it a little bit. Do more. Do you ever cast yourself? In your yeah, no, no. <laughs> How many times have you cast yourself? Uh, I don't I'm like kidding. me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't like me for that part. I'm kidding. When when you're auditioning for 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 a, a part. Do you put on your director hat or do you still think like a voice actor, how do you approach that? Certainly influence, like one influences the other and sometimes it plays a little mind games with me because mm. sometimes I'll, I'll do an audition and uh, I'll, I'll have an idea for it mm -hmm. as an actor and oh, I've got a great voice for this and mm -hmm. then I do a take and then I start thinking like, oh, you know what though, uh, I don't know if, if the way that they would direct this show would be, I don't know, that fast or right. or whatever. And I know this company does things a little bit more realistic and um, so maybe I should tone it down a little and start second guessing. <laughs> sure. So it's like yeah. mind games. Um, but more than, more often than not, it helps. It helps. Like I, I can think of the sides in terms of like what I would want to hear from mm -hmm. an audition. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, giving them a variety of different reads, the little improv bit at the end that I might give them just to show right. them like, hey, I can bring some extra humor to your show if that's mm -hmm. something that is interesting to you. Uh, it helps that I can sort of self-direct because I can do yeah. all my auditions from home or most of them. Yeah. It home. really helps yeah. that you're actually a successful director because <laughs> then you know what's good, right? What sells. Um, how many takes is it okay to send in? There's no hard and fast rule, but if you can do two very distinct takes uh, on a character that are both organic and true to the character and not just putting on a crazy voice right, for putting right. on a crazy voice sake, then then go for two takes. Um, and usually when I like slate it, I'll say, this is Sam Regal reading for blah, blah, two takes. So they know to expect that, uh -huh. and if they don't want to hear both, they can shut it off after one, and that's that's yeah. okay by me. Yeah. Or um, they can even shut it off after your sleep. <laughs> exactly, which they might do. <laughs> well, nobody does that. Uh, <laughs> um, but giving two takes is not unheard of. Um, you know, if you know if you know what they're going for, and yeah. You, 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 you just do one and done. Yeah. That's, yeah. There's something to be said for knowing what you're going to give them and. And just giving them that too. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nice. But don't give three or four or five. That's no, crazy. No, no, That's no. crazy sauce. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy sauce. Exactly. We don't want that. <laughs> and it that. doesn't taste good, that crazy no. sauce. No. All right, Sam. True or false? Oh, oh. This is a two parter. I have three nipples. <laughs> was that the question? <laughs> that was our other question. No, later. but I'm fascinated. <laughs> uh, true. Okay, two, two parts. You were a member of an a cappella singing group called the Academical Village People. True. <laughs> the academical village people? Please Listen. explain. Yeah, All a cappella groups in college have <laughs> stupid names. We're not judging. That's actually a pretty <laughs> funny <laughs> name, though. I thought Which it's were you, good. the academic Indian, yeah. the academic <laughs> police? Had nothing to do with the village people. No. So, like most a cappella college a cappella groups are called, like the clef hangers yeah. and the treble makers yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> the treble makers. Uh, I went to the University of Virginia, mm -hmm. which was founded by Thomas Jefferson, and he called it his academical village. Mm. Nice. Um, and so Virginia's we were the academical nice. village people. people. Yes. Very, Very good. good. And we were great. We we sang for sororities all the time and. Uh, it was fun and really dorky. Are there any clips on YouTube? Oh, I'm sure. Really? Uh, of me? That would be harder to find. He's gone and removed them all. <laughs> you know, there might be clips because we just went back and we had our big like reunion concerts. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So I was just in Virginia and we performed again, like got all the old guys How on the stage. How fun was that? It was fun, but man, we're like... A little rusty? We were rusty and we were looking out into this audience of all college kids <laughs> yeah. and we're like, oh my God, they think we're so old right now. <laughs> <laughs> we all have pot bellies and kids. And oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. you're really, you're really yeah. pushing daisies exactly. over there. Okay, now What's the part, part two? two. You were a series writer for the show The Sing Off on NBC. True, acapella connection there. Wow. Aca connection. Aca connection. Uh, I, I used my, I parlayed my acapella college yes. experience into um, writing for this show on, on NBC called The Sing Off, which mm -hmm. we had three seasons. There's actually, there might be a fourth season, who knows. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, I wrote, uh, I was one of the writers on the show and I, I wrote everything that the host said mm -hmm. and uh, helped out with like uh, voiceover stuff and... Um, and it's and fun because the groups compete, they're competing ultimately for a yeah, record Yeah, if you haven't seen the right? show, it's a, it's a acapella singing competition like American Idol, but with acapella groups. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really cool. And people, yeah. It was People cool. were really into it. And some of the same people who worked on that show went on to do that movie Pitch Perfect that mm -hmm. came out mm -hmm. um, yeah. recently. And man, it was, it was fun to be around dorky acapella for... Um, for whole seasons of, of TV shows. Because that's because you love it. I do love he it. It is corny, but I love it. And when I was in my a cappella group in college, we were we got to sing at Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. We got to sing uh, in Spain and Disneyland. And it was so yeah. much fun being around. A bunch I don't of think it's dorky, dorky I think it's lovely. Kind well, of thank reminds you. me of when Your Sugar one. goes on tour. <laughs> <laughs> A little different. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I bet your groupies are a little cooler. Yeah. Oh, we don't have you groupies. Wear, <laughs> you wear different blazers. Yeah, exactly, different blazers. <laughs> uh, so, Sam, what do you have going on current projects-wise? Well, uh, current projects. I'm um, working on a, on a different show for Disney uh, that's going to come out, I think, later this summer or something. More shows? Uh, it's called Wander Over Yonder, and it's a new cartoon series uh, by the, uh, the team that brought you uh, Powerpuff Girls and nice. Foster's Home for wow. uh, Imaginary Friends. And it's really fun. And it's, and it's like more of a classic, like, cartoon cartoon. Right. With, cool. with crazy characters and, yeah. and voices. Mm -hmm. And it's just nothing but fun. Has that been casted already? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're well into it. And oh, cool, uh, man. It's, it's, it's fun. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm uh, executive producing... Uh, uh, and doing some voices on a web series called Fetch Quest, which is Fetch Quest. all jokes about gamers and video games. Mm -hmm. And it's running on a website called Geek and Sundry right now. Geek and, Geek and Sundry. Dot com? Uh, I don't know if it's a dot com. It's a YouTube channel. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, YouTube slash, YouTube.com slash Geek and Sundry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else am I doing? I've got my podcast yes. oh, yeah. we talked about, which is... All Work, No Play. All Work, No All Play work, with no play. me and Liam O'Brien. And, and what we, do you guys talk about Oh, on that? boy. It's... it's <laughs> it, we, we drink <laughs> alcohol. Is. Alcohol? Yeah. I will say that there was the little explicit tab, so I'm just Yeah, saying, it's... You know. If you're underage... Don't you don't want to watch it. No. Yeah. Um, but if you're not, but uh, we, <laughs> it's me and my friend Liam, and we talk about our families and the business. And basically, we work a lot. Yeah. Um, both me and him. And so uh, every episode, we challenge ourselves to do something fun and not work related. <laughs> and then we sort of report back to the people. See how that went. Like one time, we did a zombie run. <laughs> we ran with zombies, or they chased us. Yeah. We went to a trampoline place called Sky High, which is just wall to wall trampolines. Wow. Uh, and had fun there. We. Uh, the next episode, oh, we played Dungeons and Dragons one episode. It's Dungeons just nuts. Yeah. It's just fun. So just we're really always cool, looking for man. a fun, weird thing to do. That's cool. really, really cool, man. Yeah. What else? Anything else? Uh, the thing that takes up there, a lot of I my... I can't believe that you don't have anything else. <laughs> the, <laughs> Come on. My, I have a little, I have a one-year-old son. Aww. He's my, he's my, my, my favorite project. That's really cool. Yeah. He's adorable and it's so cute and uh, he's starting to walk and... Aww, well, so man, sweet. I gotta tell you, you are, you have to be probably the coolest dad out there and awesome. when that little guy grows up, he's gonna be like, that's my daddy! <laughs> yeah! And he's gonna be as proud of you as we are for all, everything that you've accomplished, yeah. man, and all Thank the people you. that you work with, you make the them feel great. Um, Thank you so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you for having Thank me. Really. Sam. Thank you so, so much. Success. Sam is a busy guy, as you yeah. already know, and he He's took time go. to come here and share with us and share with you guys, and that was some awesome stuff, dude. Well, thank you very much thank for having you. me. I, I I I look forward to to seeing this all cut together. I hope you take out all of my of my, course we will <laughs> my awful stuff. We're gonna make <laughs> you sound like a superhero. <laughs> Good. Please put that filter on. <laughs> it makes me sound deep and manly. <laughs> <laughs> I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and man, I'm tingly. Well, that's all we have for today. Please join us next week for another incredible episode of VO Buzz Weekly. And make sure to find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, you guys. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.